Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing what happens if I shine a 5,000 milliwatt laser on a 10 pound block of ice. Will it actually melt the ice or will the beam just go right through it? And then I'll try it on a small block of ice that I have dyed completely black with an extremely black dark pigment. And so I want to see if that makes the results any different with my burning laser. Okay, so before we shine it on the ice, first we want to see what happens when we shine light on different surfaces. How much of it gets reflected and how much of it goes through the material. Well, there's a rather interesting effect that happens when you shine light on something and when you shine light in something. And the easiest way to see this is with jello. And this will help you understand how fiber optic cable works. So when your light source is in air and it hits the surface of a liquid, in this case I'm using jello, you can see that a lot of the light gets reflected. You can see it on the wall behind me. So, the, so I just have a little red laser here, a really weak laser pointer. And you can see that when I shine it on the surface of the jello, a lot of it gets reflected. But a very interesting thing happens if your light source is coming from within the liquid. So watch what happens when I shine the source from within the liquid and it hits the air jello interface. You can see that it just reflects off the surface as if it were a mirror. See how it just sits the top there and reflects back down? So you can see I can shine the laser beam down in the center here, but if I turn the angle to try to shine it outside of the jello, it's like it doesn't want to leave. It just reflects off the sides and stays in there. See, this should easily be shining out of the jello, but it's, it's reflecting off the sides of the jello and staying inside. So basically, any light that enters the jello gets trapped inside. So what that means is that if you had a stream of water and you were shining a light inside of that water, almost all of the light would stay within that stream. Even if you bend the stream or do whatever you want with it, the light will stay inside of there. And you can show that by shining a laser through a stream that's dropping into my sink here. So I just have a hole in this bottle. When I let it go, the water comes out like this. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Look how the laser just stays with the water. Let out the stream. It stays with the water as it goes down in the drain. So the way you saw that laser light stay reflected within that stream of water is the same reason why fiber optic cables work so well. So fiber optic cables are made of tiny little glass wires and they shine the light through the wires and the light is the actual signal. And even though you have thousands of miles of, the, of this fiber optic cable, there's very little attenuation. So most of the light stays within that wire even if you bend the wire or do anything. Just like you saw my light going through the water even though the water was bent. In fact, the ability of water to contain light within it is the reason why things look darker when they're wet and also the reason why rain clouds are gray. So when you get your clothes wet, the light can go inside of the water in the clothes, but it can't get out very easily. And so basically it just reflects off all of the surfaces of the water within the clothes. And the longer it goes through that water, the more likely it is to get absorbed. And so after a lot of reflection, some of the light got absorbed before it exited and got to your eye. And so that makes everything that's wet and has a lot of water in it look darker than normal because the light that normally would have just gone back and hit your eyes got stuck inside of those clothes for a while in the water and then finally came out. And so a lot of it got absorbed. And the same thing for rain clouds. So rain clouds have a lot of droplets of water in them 
and the light gets trapped within those droplets. It reflects off all the surfaces before it finally exits. And so a lot of the light gets absorbed and so the rain clouds look darker. So we'll see if it actually does anything to the ice, whether it just kind of warms it up and starts melting a little bit, melts a hole through it, or does nothing. Okay, now let's see what happens when we actually shine the laser on the ice. So you can see on the surface of the ice, this isn't very clear ice, but it has air in it and it also has kind of small chunks of ice on it, kind of like snow on top. So first let's see what happens when I have the snow type stuff on it, and then I'll try to scrape it off and see if that makes a difference. Okay, burning laser on a block of ice. Three, two, one. Whoa, cool, it lights up the whole ice. So it melted it only where I touched the aluminum to the ice. In fact, that melted it pretty quickly, quicker than the laser itself. <laughs> So it looks like the ice is completely unaffected by the laser. And so it's not like it's gonna melt a single hole through it because most of the energy is getting absorbed kind of by this whole block of ice. And there's a lot of energy it needs in order to melt it. So even though the laser is extremely powerful and it would burn my finger if I touched it because of all the power in that small area, once it hits the ice, it kind of just spreads out everywhere. And so it's no longer that much power per area. Okay, so the laser didn't do anything to the block of ice. Let's see what my 32,000 lumen flashlight can do. Okay, three, two, one. Whoa, look at that. I can just feel the heat coming off of this. Uh, it lets off a lot of visible light, but a lot of it is infrared light as well. Okay, so it did melt it a little bit, not much. It's not like it just turns the whole thing into liquid here. So even though these are extremely powerful lights, they basically did nothing to this block of ice. One of the reasons is because of how big this block of ice is. If you put a lot of heat in one area really fast, then you can locally get some melting. But overall, the whole thing's not just gonna melt because basically the rest of the block of ice keeps taking away heat that's trying to melt that ice that you're getting warm. But this may be a different story if we don't use normal ice and we use black ice. So let's see what happens when we shine my laser on black ice. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's see if this looks any different. Shining a burning laser on black ice. Three, two, one. Oh, it's melting it. So you can see that tiny little hole forming there. That's the laser eating through the ice, melting it. Let's keep shining it and see what happens. It ate a hole right into it. <laughs> That's way cool. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep it in that hole. Okay, so in this case, we have this black pigment in here. Whoa, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> look how deep it is. We have this black pigment in here that can now absorb the laser light. So it looks like we could burn a hole right through this if we wanted. Okay, now let's see what happens when we shine our 32,000 lumen flashlight on it. Three, two, one. Oh, it's definitely melting. It may be too bright for you to see right now, but it is melting. You can see how much it melted. <laughs> That's what happens when you shine a very bright light on black ice. So in this case, what's happening is it's actually those black particles inside that are absorbing the light and heating up. 
and then the ice is taking away some of that energy and it's melting the ice. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video is out. And head over to theactionlab.com to check out the new Action Lab subscription box. And I'll see you next time.